Eddie Hearn has signed Chinese heavyweight Zeli Zhang. I'm sure I'm butchering the first name or probably the surname too, but that's how I'm going to pronounce it. Now, I've known about this guy for many years. The first time I saw him was actually in the Olympics when he lost to Anthony Joshua. And that was one of Anthony Joshua's decisive wins in the Olympics, because obviously there was a lot of controversy about AJ's win, quote unquote, over Eris Landy Savon. I think most of us agree that AJ really lost that fight and got a gift decision. There's also some controversy over his win in the finals against uh, R- uh, Roberto Camarell, somebody he'd previously beaten in the uh, world championships. Now in the world championships, there was really no controversy. He beat Roberto Camarell. He didn't, you know, totally batter him or anything, but he he does he definitely deserved to win. You you won't find many people who look at that world championships fight that AJ had with Camarell and say that AJ didn't deserve to win. But in the Olympic final, it was close. It was very close, and it really it could have gone either way. And people need to understand that the way they score Olympic uh, style boxing or amateur boxing, as we used to call it, but now they call it Olympic style boxing. The way they score it is different to how they score professional boxing. That's what you need to understand, okay? The criteria is different. But anyway, uh, AJ had two decisive wins in the Olympics. One was over Ivan Ditchko, and the other was against Zili Zhang, this man who Eddie Hearn has just signed, a Chinese southpaw who is six foot six and 37 years of age. He is currently 21 and oh, with 16 KOs as a professional. And I have to confess, I don't think I've watched any of his pro fights so far. I might have seen a few little clips here and there, but I don't think I've sat down to watch from start to finish any of his professional fights. But just scrolling through his pro record here on BoxRec, there's nobody there to speak of. He fought Curtis Harper, who he stopped in one. Curtis Harper famously got out of the ring before the opening bell against uh, F.A. Ajagba. Who else is on here? Rodenko, in his last fight, is the only other name I recognize. And he went the distance with Rodenko. To be fair, Rodenko is a tough man. Rodenko has been the distance with, you know, some formidable people. As you can see, on Rodenko's record, five losses, but he's never been stopped. And those five losses were to Zeli Zhang, Ajit Kabayel, Pavetkin, he went the distance with him. Also went the distance with Huey Fury and Lucas Brown. So, Rodenko's a tough guy, always could take a shot. It's no real dent in, uh, you know, Zhang's resume to see that he's been the distance with uh, Rodenko. But as I say, at 37 years of age, 21 and 0, and he hasn't really fought anybody of any serious note yet. I'm not sure where they're going to go with Zilly Zhang. I think Eddie Hearn is probably, I mean, there there are two ways Eddie Hearn's going to go with this. Either He tries to sell, he tries to dress mutton as lamb and sell uh, Zeli Zhang to people in China as a legitimate heavyweight contender, kind of how Bob Arum did with the other Chinese Olympian who didn't really go anywhere. And Bob Arum tried to sell him as like the Chinese Manny Pacquiao. Remember that a few years ago? Yeah, (laughs) that all fell on its face. Will Eddie Hearn go down that road <laughs> to try to sell this guy to the Chinese public as, you know, the first world heavyweight champion from China? He could either go down that route or he can basically use Zhang as cannon fodder for his pre-existing heavyweight stable. And I say that respectfully because Eddie Hearn has, at least to my mind, much more talented heavyweights on his books than this guy. And... I'm speaking about it cynically because that's the way promoters think because at the end of the day, this is a business. Does Eddie Hearn really believe that Zhang is going to be world heavyweight champion? I seriously doubt it. Okay, so so being realistic and practical about it, he's thinking, okay, well, you know, he's, he's kind of a novelty, a Chinese heavyweight. He's an Olympian. He fought AJ, his history there. Maybe I can build him up to fight AJ in China. You know, and that would be a rematch of one of the uh, Olympic bouts that they had. And AJ really should smash this guy to pieces. (laughs) So maybe that's what Eddie Hearn's looking at. Build him up a little bit in the UK, maybe, or maybe do shows in China. I don't know. And get the AJ fight on at some point. Now, he has talked about this. 
Okay, in a recent interview, he said that, yeah, down the line, uh, Zhang <laughs> versus AJ could happen. It could be sold out, you know, Wembley or Cardiff sometime in the future, or even in Saudi Arabia or Africa or China. So that is what, what Eddie Hearn is thinking. So if he's going to try and preserve Zeli Zhang for an Anthony Joshua showdown uh, down the road, then he's probably going to put Zhang in with pretty poor opposition, isn't he? Because if Zhang isn't actually that good, and at 37 years of age, he really needs to get a move on, he can't afford to take too many risks with him if he wants to keep him as a viable, at least in the eyes of casuals, a viable challenger to Anthony Joshua. And as I say, the other road that he could take him down is just say, okay, let's put him in with Hergovic. Let's put him in with Bacoli. Let's put him in with, uh, you know, whoever. Eddie Hearn has got on his books at the moment. Joseph Parker. Yeah, if he, if he wants to fight, maybe, he, maybe he'll treat him like one of those heavyweights. We'll see. I would prefer, from an entertainment perspective, to see Zhang in there against some of Eddie Hearn's other heavyweights. Not because I want bad for Zhang or, or anything like that. Not at all. But if you're just trying to feed him cream puffs and then, uh, you know, sell mutton dressed as lamb and feed him to AJ, you know, I, I don't like that. <laughs> I would prefer to actually find out if Zhang can fight before you put him in with an Anthony Joshua. So I want to see if he can, you know, hold his own against decent quality heavyweights in the top 10, top 15. And if he can, then I'll be like, okay, maybe the AJ rematch in the pros is something I might actually be interested in. So let's see what happens here. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'm especially interested to hear from those of you who have actually watched Zhang fight as a professional. Have you seen, let's say, the Redenko fight? And what did you take from it? What do you think his strengths and weaknesses are? Do you think there's any heavyweights in the top 10, top 15 that Zhang could actually beat? I'm not writing him off here, people, but I'm just saying. I'm asking you the question. So let me know in the comments below how you feel about this fighter, the fact that Eddie Hearn signed him, what you think Eddie Hearn is going to do with him, what you would like to see Eddie Hearn do with him, and all the other points I've raised in this video. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.